minutes for an opening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you to our witnesses today. For many railroad tracks in this country have too often existed as a symbol of division, inequity, and a legacy of racial oppression. In the aftermath of slavery, and as a result of redlining, black communities and other underserved communities formed settlements near rail lines. Even though these areas were polluted with hazardous locomotive emissions, which we now know are associated with disease and premature death, they settled there because they had nowhere else to go. This is why when I would ask some of my constituents, where do you live, where do you work, and where do you go to school, they often respond with across the tracks, which serves not just as an answer, but a statement of the persisting injustice and disproportionate burdens placed on so many communities of color. The California Air Resource Board, or CARB, is working to limit harmful emissions from locomotives, including by requiring cleaner engines after 2030 and reducing the time locomotives spend idling. CARB estimates that these efforts would save 32 billion in health costs and prevent over 3,200 premature deaths in California. This regulation seeks to steer the railroad industry towards doing its part to prevent the worst impacts of the climate crisis. Every year, extreme weather events strike with increasing frequency and severity at sea levels as sea levels continue to rise. For the residents of my district who live in South Florida, these threats are not just concerning, they are existential. We have seen constant flooding in South Florida recently, and seas are projected to rise in Miami-Dade County by over a foot within the next 30 years, dramatically increasing flood risk further inland and threatening the homes and livelihoods of frontline communities. Just last week, we had our first Category 5 hurricane in the Caribbean, the earliest ever in hurricane season. It is now more important than ever that we protect California's right to implement nation-leading regulations. The industry's response to this regulation should not be to sue CARP. We have had national tier Ford locomotive standards in place since 2015, which the industry seems to have avoided implementing for over 90% of its locomotives. The technology exists. What, miss, what is missing is the investment, the will, and the commitment to ending the legacy of railroad communities suffocating under the deadly effects of air pollution. It is only this commitment that may begin to make the phrase across the tracks a phrase of the past. In today's hearing, I look forward to learning what the railroad industry is doing to improve our air quality and the health of communities living near rail yards. Mr. Chair, the United States Climate Alliance recently submitted a letter to EPA Administrator Reagan supporting the deployment of zero emission technologies across all transportation modes. And Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask for unanimous consent to add this letter to the record. Without objection. And I yield back. The gentlelady yields. I ask 